Hey everybody. I am certainly out by the curb right now. I am, in fact. On the curb. <laughs> Trying to uh, sleep. And I'm just mentioning it because uh, I have to be really quiet. There's a talker. If I start talking, he's going to come over and start talking. I'll never go to sleep. <laughs> he's a sweetheart, too. But I am attempting to get acclimated to sleeping while, like, today is a dry night. I was prepared for rain, but how am I going to sleep in rain and snow <laughs> if I can't do it now? So, um, it's really important, you know, I'm trying. I had something neat happen. Uh, I went on Facebook just for my friends and family who are, you know, not normally hearing about this stuff. And I told them about the show. I, I posted the link to, um, livestream.com forward slash other possibilities. Because, uh, they, uh, they had me on for 90 minutes. It was really exciting. And I got to talk a lot about, you know, he asked me questions about me and my journey and so forth. But we talked about Vigil TV, talked about the Vigil itself, you know, about the connections and Occupy. And it was really exciting. And, and so my friend... Right after I posted it, she was like, hey, the link, it stopped after a while. And I realized, my God, my friend saw, I said it was 90 minutes long. <laughs> and she was watching on YouTube. And, uh, you know, they told me, uh, I guess I'm used to talking to people who are either occupier folks and activists in the larger community, or they live out here, and so they know firsthand. These friends of mine, who are a very caring couple, had no idea, I'm pretty sure, about any of this. So, um, you know, those are people I'd really like to reach, which is why, um, why I'm working hard on uploading clips to the new YouTube. We had the archive, and then now we have, um, I've been, like, piecing little bits, you know, two to ten minutes, um, as short as possible to this new YouTube channel, so just get single points, you know, instead of, you know, like, the whole interview or the whole everything that happened that night in one video. Anyway, um, all of that, if you don't know already, is on VigilTV.com, so you can connect, and then there's the Twitter, and if you follow 99, you're going to get notified when he goes on. He's also, what did he say that he tweeted? Oh, his court dates. Um, he is going to court for our action, just as Colonel did. Um, and, uh, you know, we need a good lawyer for him. And I think, I think he'll probably get one. Maybe the same person. Um, but that is one thing that we do have is a lot of evidence. Because this channel has been running and he's been recording. And I've been recording and other people when he's been harassed for being a protester. However... You know, uh, I first heard from Moonjin, who was live streaming um, the monthly vigil for a man who was shot while already down on the ground with his hands up um, over near Lloyd Center, I believe, uh, in a neighborhood. Um, I can't come up with his name. 
It's an interesting name. Anyway, this uh, Moonjin uh, was there, 99 was there, and he was saying that, that uh, 99 had just told him that the police are not bothering him and that their speculation was that it was because of Colonel talking to the city attorney who said he knew nothing about them trying to tell us that the sidewalk was rezoned even in the outside the pedestrian use zone. It's real interesting because the same lawyer on if you watch Mary versus Portland and listen to this man I'm telling him that they rezoned it because of us. And he said, he said, no, it wasn't us. You know, it was the, it was the Department of Transportation or city, no, engineers. And what was really funny is at some point when I kept saying, you guys did it, come on. You did it because you said that there were people sleeping here and it was causing this traffic violation. What you're saying is the people sleeping here, which is our demonstration, that's the only people who've been here since December. And it's also, you know, it just happened and we've been out here. So be honest, you did it because of us. And he's like, no, it wasn't. We were real careful to have it be the city engineers. So what he basically said is, that the city directed to make sure that, on paper anyway, it was the city engineers, but the guy said it on camera, and <laughs> so whatever they're saying, they better watch their step, because what they've basically copped to is making up ordinances, you know, interpretations or whatever, with the goal of getting the protesters out, just like they've made up new stuff with the goal of getting people out of parks or you know any safe place for them to sleep and uh, you know I, I am about to upload some clips of people who were chased out of the park and saying exactly like you know they're just making stuff up new every day and, uh, and Draco was saying we could have snuggies because right now it's they're saying bedding but at this rate, they're going to say bedding, including coats that can be converted into bedding or something. You know, I mean, they're, they're seriously, they are making stuff up uh, on call as they desire to, you know, have the end result that they want, which is people out of sight, out of mind. So I'm ready to file a lawsuit based on our, our protest, you know, my personal property being taken with all this video, and if you guys look at it, we got recently, it's only on the archive, I haven't made the clips yet, I'm working as fast as I can, but, um, you'll see the, the police come and tear up lightning signs, see them come and harass me and laugh at me, saying it's not a protest, it's really an unbelievable amount of evidence of complete and total abuse of power and um, so while I commend you know Colonel if he could talk some sense into them you know to stop whatever's going on here uh, I've already had damage I've already had my rights trampled on and uh, I'm, I don't think it's gonna stop until they learn maybe a monetary and um, responsibility lesson because there's people who you know given enough you know money paid out over their indiscretion might have some pressure on them from their boss to either stop or be laid off now if it's a police officer I'm sure they'll just get paid to sit at home because we've had people who have murdered people in cold blood under the name of the law and some citation of some incompetence like oh I thought that banana was a gun something you could never get a license to carry a gun if that were a civilian anyway that that kind of thing they, they get laid off with pay um, 
but you know even that comes back because the public gets pretty mad <laughs> every time that happens so I don't know I, I see only good coming out of a lawsuit against the city for what they've done and uh, I was really happy to see that somebody on the OPN channel when I was interviewed when I put a call out for that said she's on it she's going to try to find me somebody and you know we're not even in the same state but, uh, you know, I, I, the good thing is, is that lawyer, whoever they are, can look at VigilTV.com and uh, see whether or not I have a case, um, you know, or if it can be done, if we as a group, it would be great. Because, you know... We have some ideas about things that we could do, citizen solutions, you know. And we're really good at being frugal, getting the bang for the buck, which is, I guess, you know, an interview with Jim. He says that's why they don't want, that's exactly what they don't want. <laughs> There's no room for dipping if you're frugal and good with money. But uh, we get sure there's some great ideas coming out of uh, the protesters. Really excellent. And I, I've, I, I'm excited because I just, I was thinking I had to buy a prism. And what I didn't realize is that the freeware that I thought didn't have what I thought it needed uh, has something just as good. So I am able to do a conversion using prism and that's a really good freeware and I can convert I have to pull it down off a of Ustream convert it from a flash video to an mp4 using uh, using prism and then I got real player which has improved amazingly since I first had it years ago and uh, I can trim those videos now and upload them to YouTube so I'm in that process with all those videos, so it should go much faster. I should be able to load a lot more. And those clips, you, you hear people's stories, their insights, you know, their dreams. You see what the police are doing. You see what the lawyers are telling us. Um, there's exactly um, enough to figure out whether we have a a case for a lawyer there's enough to have a think tank on some of these suggestions that people have just they come up with off the top of their head um, which is why I'm wondering why the people paid to do that over the last 20 years haven't done anything like this that, that I could see as far as just going out and talking to people and you know and maybe that, that will come out of it. Maybe somebody will do that. Because these people have the answers. You know, they have the experience. They're driven. You know, the the most oppressed are the ones who are going to lead, lead the civil rights movement. And in this case, it would be across, you know, housing status, but also just general income, power lines. And I don't think we've ever been in a state like we are today where, you know, I've said this before, but I don't think we've ever been in a situation where we've had 99% have a minority of power, you know. I mean, maybe we have, but it hasn't been a weapon as much as blatantly and as affecting us on this scale. And to see what happened today with this austerity, which I'm still trying to grok, but the solidarity with the other countries. Mario told me that Germans were flipping over cars, and it was a big deal in Egypt, and this was more of a solidarity with people. Um, he said that it wasn't just the idea of deficit spending reduction by cutting social programs. It was the idea of 
banks actually ordering the government to do this and hurting the people for profit it had nothing to do with you know trying to balance a budget it had to do with the bank control of the government milking the people and uh, so that's fascinating but imagine if <laughs> if this keeps going and the world decides the people decide there's no governments there's only people versus wealthy, powerful, disruptive forces. And we threw that off together. That's an evolution. That's not a civil unrest revolution forever. That's a true evolution. And the amount of hope in the air for many people have expressed it. The movement gives us hope. Doing something about it gives us hope. But uh, it also helps that people haven't been beaten as much, that the marches and the beatings are not currently going on. i got to see what's going on here. Just a second. I was talking to this viewer. I don't. I don't smoke. Sorry. Is it like you go get hot water? What? Do I need to go get hot water? Oh, that's mine. You mean on that one? What do you... Do you need hot water for something? For, do you want to make coffee? I tried to do something. Oh. You too. Um... Also, one guy we never want to go when he's there. Yeah. So, you know, I wait just a little bit. Can I, are you going to be around? I cannot be back on the road. Oh, okay. Yeah, by then we should probably be able to brew some up. I'm going to be here till 8. Sorry, man. Hey, did you see my cup? Right there? Take the lid off if there's any in there. Oh, okay. Just take the lid off and have some. It's probably not very hot, but it's, warm. it's something. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Just leave the cup when you're done. Very important, you guys. <laughs> so, uh... Looks like, looks like they're stirring. We gotta fix those oil lamps. I guess there's a procedure that you need to pliers for. I don't have it to get so we don't have any candles at the moment. But other than that, it looks really nice. We've got a lot of good people. A lot of them are new. But there's still some some people you guys would recognize. Well, if you've been if you've been watching all week, then you probably already know them. I want to um, take a moment to to ask you guys if you want to help us before the rain gets here. One idea. There's no P.O. box or anything, so you'd actually have to write. But check out on visualtv.com if you see the email link. Um, get in touch with me if you're interested, wherever you are. You know, I don't know if you're local or if you're watching somewhere else, but um, if you're interested in helping us with tarps, I put on like a, a link to the Kroger Fred Meyer gift card because we can get a $5 tarp there. And um, 
that would that would be really helpful. I wish I wish we could get a roll of Tyvek. You know how expensive that would be. But I mean, if we knew anybody who was on a construction site that was done with their Tyvek house wrap, um, we also had a friend give me a tip about a lady I could contact about this project. But uh, I'm not going to say more than that because I have to wait to hear from her. But she might be able to help us keep people warm and dry with her nonprofit. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm I'm concerned about not just the rain, but when it gets cold after it rains. I mean, days where you just do not get dry after that. Because they can't go indoors if they have their stuff with them. People don't let you go into a coffee shop and just sit there if you have a backpack. You know? other people they can go in and even if they don't have any money they can probably get away with loitering but um, as I understand it folks who have to be out here are not welcome anywhere to get warm there was a man named Keller he's like one of our first interviews there's you know on the clips channel I have him now those are worth watching he was like there's nowhere to be you can't just go somewhere. Just hang out. Everywhere you go, people hassle you. They don't want you there. And he was, I haven't loaded this one yet, but he was talking about Bologna Joe's. He was like, it was the greatest thing. You just go in there and just be. There's a television. They didn't throw you out for anything. They didn't have any rules. You, you, you couldn't be violent. That was it. People who have anger problems and yell and stuff, they, they left them alone anyway and let them work it out. And everybody basically did. Um, and they could be warm. And so in the middle of the night, when they get wet, you know, they could just kind of come in there and chill. And uh, now there's nothing like that. Uh, this is what Portland needs. It's a big living room. Just take a gymnasium and put in a bunch of couches. 24 hours heat dry you know I don't know what they would do about bugs that's really one thing that worries me somehow you know you know I know the shelters are making people have TV cards um, but I really have I have no idea how somebody could get over that situation, you know, but that's what think tanks are for. <laughs> Somebody who really could think these things through. Anyway, it'd be awesome. Big living room. I think it'd be great to get people lawn chairs. Like a really lightweight. I know you still have to have a frame, but they're not they're not too heavy. Some of them. Lawn chairs to keep people out of the rain. I mean, not out of the rain, but out of the rain, pooling under their sleeping bag, soaking them. We gotta get some kind of system though, because uh, last year I felt just so unprepared. I got a little bit more prepared as the winter went on. I learned things. I kept thinking my shoes were leaking and my feet were so cold, so I kept putting on more and more socks. It turns out I was sweating. I didn't have any air. <laughs> So the reason my feet were froze, frozen in the cold was because I was trying to keep them too warm. I didn't know. I also didn't know how deadly it is to get wet in the winter. Because I've always been able to get somewhere warm, but when I took the bus out here and I was stuck all night, there were a few nights where I, uh, and my whole 
core temperature is just really low. Cause it, just because my feet or my head or my clothes got wet. And then I was, you know, in freezing temperature or darn near. Well, I learned to be afraid of rain. Really careful with my, you know, like when I had a rain jacket to make sure that I had it zipped up well. You know, no no leaky areas. You know, rubber band my sleeve if I had to. And the problem is, is that I learned that too late. And I started getting kind of a traumatic reaction every time it rained. Um, I wouldn't go outside when it rained. I'm an Oregonian. I, rain doesn't bother me at all. I never used to wear a coat. I just walk in the rain. I dry off. But after this last winter, there was a couple of months where uh, I was literally afraid of rain. And I've noticed I don't have that now after the summer. Anyway, all this stuff is the next, you know, step was uh, could I have a bedroll that didn't weigh a zillion pounds, and that was just a matter of waiting at Goodwill for the right sale, or Desiree Industries, or wherever I went. So I got the gear. And by good sale, I mean my bedroll, my uh, sleeping bag, and my blow up mattress thingy roll up real small in there like I think five bucks total mm. yeah good morning anyway that's a skill but it's also equipment, and I, I would love it if everybody had that, but we have people who come and go, so really the number of us is quite large. So instead of, you know, trying to, and it's really hard to hang on to stuff. I mean, they have to carry it everywhere they go, so stuff gets lost, and I don't judge for that, you know, but... It's not really a good use of cash. So we're trying to figure out how to outfit people. We're demonstrating here on a regular basis. Um, we tried washing blankets together and it was not cost effective. And um, what I think we decided was that we would uh, we would try to get somebody together, you know, get them what they needed to be warm and dry. And they would have to show that they were able to keep that. Do you well, have any nope. I don't. I'm sorry. We're going to, you know what? Uh, probably around 7. I don't know. What time does 99 usually get up? Huh? What time is 99 usually? It is unusual, okay. Well, um, I guess we're out of butane. And that's, uh, you know, maybe it's in the green box. Yeah, they probably need it at all. They didn't even get it up the same way, though. Okay, I thought we had a stockpile, but maybe we're, we're it out. Goes, it goes pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Huh. What time does Safeway open? Oh, I would imagine 9 or 10, something like that. Uh, I think they open real early, but yeah. I don't have any money, but I can drive us. Everybody wants coffee? Maybe Colonel's going to be back. Colonel? Yeah, he was here last night. He's coming. What? He was here yesterday afternoon. Oh, in the afternoon. Okay, because I didn't get here till 8, so I missed him. Yeah, he was here about 5, I guess. Okay. He's coming back, uh... He's, he's, did you, have you 
talk to me? Recently? Yeah. They told you about the rezoning of the sidewalk? Uh, what's the latest? That the whole sidewalk is pedestrian uh, use. The wall. Uh, he talked to you today? Yeah, he talked yesterday. Yesterday. So, yeah. can can I get you on camera? The city, uh, the city, uh, contacted him and told him that there's been a rezoning. So, from the wall all the way off to the street, it's been redesignated as the best zone of the town block. So apparently, they're going to start enforcing it as far as I know Monday, which is tomorrow. So, so they're just, um, they admitted uh, to me on camera that they did it as a result of our demonstration. And this is City Hall. And this is why I'm going to sue them. Yeah. Because... Oh, yeah, that's an infringement on your rights. And it is strictly to get back it up. It has nothing to do with pedestrians. Right. <laughs> Three, right Okay, so, because I had talked to him a couple days before, and he was really optimistic. Yeah. The journal? Yeah. Well, it didn't work out. He said they contacted him. He, was, he came down here looking for 99, and 99 was gone at the time. And he hung around for a while, but he said, why? Well, he didn't say for sure he's going to be back down today, but he said he'd be sure he'd be back down on Monday, or tonight, because he figures Monday morning is when they're going to start throwing everybody off the sidewalk. That's what he told me. Well, wow. we, we figure, well, they'll wait till Monday. So we have got to have demonstrators come out, and that's outrageous. It is, isn't it? How can you rezone something that quick and for no purpose whatsoever? It's like there's a sudden influx in people using a sidewalk. The whole thing has got to be designated pedestrian friendly. Yeah. There is no... There is no well, they can't do that, I mean, especially here. I mean, I don't know if they've noticed, but this is ours. You know, that's crazy. Okay, so I guess we're back on the situation where I need a lawyer. I, I am... Um, yeah, the colonel was trying to get a lawyer yesterday. I know how it did. I, uh, I know that there was a lady in another state who saw me on a show uh, about this. Yeah. And I put a call out and... The moderator told me that the person in the chat room was the right lady to, to talk to. And I'm, so I'm really hoping that I am contacted. She said that she was going to look. It would have been yesterday. So, and she'd been successful in other states with helping people get their actions um, and make people pay. You know, not necessarily monetarily, but more just like backing off. Yeah. Um, well, don't let them get away with it. It's almost like uh, pranks, hijinks that they can get away with because they have some authority to bend the law for a while. And that doesn't seem right. That, you know, somebody in that position should be the abuse of power. Prank, should be a prank. Right. Yeah, a prank should be a prank. Right. So. Uh, okay. So, I, I wish that. I wish that Colonel had called me because we were just talking the day before and I've been up on this story, but, you know, you know, because I'm not here, I'm working from home on this stuff. I'm doing the video editing and that's time consuming. So anyway, well, I plan to be here more often. The only problem I have is getting here. I don't mind spending the night. Although I gotta learn, John, I gotta learn how to sleep here, or I can't be here. Cause the last time when I did this, I did that, you know, every other night thing for several months. And when I did it, I uh, I didn't sleep. I was staying and watch. But that meant that the next day I was trashed more than just not sleeping because of the cold. But, you know, I get dehydrated and messed up. So I I basically put life on hold for about five months 
Well, this time I, I would like to actually sleep out here, even if it's raining, to figure out how to get lifted off the ground or something. If I can do that, then by being here every other day, I don't ruin the next day. So I would I would still be able to function in life, you know, um, and then protest. So anyway. Yeah, you just get used to it after a while. Yeah, but I mean, I, I've I've been here. I slept one time for a few hours. I was out like a light, but that was only once, and it was a warm night. So. Anyway, I guess uh, the guy, I really, I'm going to have to uh, follow up with my friend to see if she had any luck. Um, or uh, maybe, see, it's the weekend, so it might not, you know. But I'll have to talk to, to Colonel first. Um, I think it sounds like the city just contacted him yesterday. Well, they, the city needs to understand that I have on videotape a lot of really incriminating stuff for my lawsuit against them, you know, yeah. and that I have it saved and with other people. It's not like it's just in my computer and you could throw it in the garbage and be rid of me. You know, it's all over, all over YouTube. You know, you can see it's clear harassment, playing with the law, as you said, like a prankster. Um, they they incriminate themselves in things that they say. You know, they're just so obvious. This is this is the great thing about abusers of power is because they they think that they can do no wrong. You know, get away with everything, and then they're sloppy and stupid, and you know. It, the judges don't buy that. The, the judges Hopefully have been on our side. Hopefully they are. All over the U.S. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was counting the money. I was like, what can we do with money from a lawsuit? And, and the one thing that came to mind was we may not be able to, to solve housing right away with a little bit of money, but we could probably make a giant living room. A really big, comfortable, lots of, you know, a little quiet area, a little TV here, lots of couches, dry, clean, you know, there's a couple of obstacles, like the whole bed bug thing, you know, that's scary, but we could get some people to think on it and figure it out, you know without making everybody get TV cards and, you know, all that, I think we could still find a way to make, because uh, this guy named Keller came by and he was telling me about Baloney Joe's and what that was like. So, you know, another thing that we could do is, is uh, try to make some kind of locker thing. Like, get a grant. You don't have to be a, I don't know, lockers. Let people put their backpack away. Yeah, yeah it'd help out a lot. Increase your mobility a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't have to have a stigma everywhere you went, you know, that people are going to discriminate and, and be nasty to you. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that burden, you know, it, the city uh, could do that, you know. I don't know. Those are like small things that would make, you know, living a little bit better. To you know, until you know, until we actually solve the problem of people being in danger out here. Yeah, it's a long road. Yeah, but I, I, I see no downside in suing the city. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe some people could lose their jobs. 
you know, who need to. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people need jobs. Right. So when you take out an apple like that, you're just making somebody else happy by giving them a job who, who deserves it. So let's let's get the hell out of office, you know. <laughs> well, you know, there's also the officers and the you know the the different officials that are on the lower level, you know. Oh, I know. They go into the whole echelon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and some of those people, I bet, are keeping other people who need jobs from having them. Oh, sure. So we can, you know, help the economy and get so, those so jerks it's out. It's a job growth thing. That's <laughs> exactly. It's our program to help good people have jobs. Okay. <laughs> well... I wonder, this is very interesting, I'm very sad that the Colonel was not successful. We, we had uh, thrown out the idea that we were beyond negotiation, but I was already counting my chickens that the harassment was going to stop. So, boy. I'm even more interested in getting this video done. Because the more video I load, especially to the clips where somebody could get like a real accurate, and I have to rename all those videos. The only reason I'm not leaving right now is because I need to... Pablo's in there. <laughs> He's his feet are he says it's all blisters. It it looked like he'd like gotten his feet wet to me, but all that white area around his toes and everything, it's like just this layer of blister. Walking around wet feet, no socks. We got a pair of socks for him. Donna brought, she bought just one pair of socks. It was a really good pair for that right time. And here we got this guy. I'm glad I remembered. Anyway, I stuck him in my car to kind of be warm a little bit. If you guys are wondering about the ethics of me asking for gas money, um, that is one option, one of the things that we donate, you know, or provide a request for, for these gas cards. The thing is, is when I come down, we use my car for various things. And when it gets wet, one of those things is driving around with the heater on and drying people out. It's been really effective. Um... You know, or just a warm-up. It's basically like a, a warming center. Of course, we charge our phones in it and the hotspot for the wireless. Give rides. I, I list it all on the website, a bunch of stuff that I've done with that car. Um, you know, it, it may or may not be always important for me to be here. We have enough of a crew now. It's not like last year where there were periods of time where if I hadn't been here, there wouldn't have been somebody here. Um, although I, I found out that 99 was here. He was just, you know, chilling in the shadows sometimes. I didn't even know. Um, but before that, even. But those times are over. Now we have, you know, we have a perpetual, sustainable demonstration. And it's been that way for months. I knew I was fine to leave when I needed to leave for a month or two. Um, part of it being trapped without gas money. But, you know, I was at home doing my thing. And everybody had this place just running usual drama and stuff. But, you know... I mean, it was, it was going great. 
Well, hey. Erie. Is that PA, Pennsylvania, like Lake Erie? Because that would be so weird because I have been uh, talking about Pennsylvania. <laughs> It also looks like my husband's name, Ernie Paul. Just add three letters. <laughs> I'm talking to viewer. Is that Anna? Anyway, um, right on. Thank you for the peace and solidarity. <laughs> right on. Yay. Now, Anna Hata to do one. Is that Anna or something else? What's what's your name there mean? Or maybe that's your last name. So uh, yeah, I was just gabbing. There's nothing going on right now. I was making a call out for gas money. Oh, hi, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice talking to you. Right now, there's uh, there's a bunch of sleepers doing our demonstration. Lisa, do you know what we are demonstrating for? I mean, it's the Occupy Portland vigil at City Hall to end the camping ban. So, are you new? Or do you know about why we are out here and what we're doing. Just curious. There's a delay also between when I say something and they hear it and when the text gets back to me. Oh my gosh! The heart chakra. Anahata. That's rad. was I saying? Oh yeah. It looks like I'm going to need to, uh, I'm going to need to drive here for a few days because we can use all of us with experience for both streaming and demonstrating and standing up to police. I was doing a pretty decent job when I was here in the mornings when they were hassling people. Um, because one of the things that we do is we give them the rope to hang themselves by and they say stupid, horrible things we get the city attorney to come out and incriminate himself and say stupid things, not realizing it and it's very effective for the lawsuit so I would really like to be here and in the process I can use my car for other people like I said, the charging is important not just our live streamy stuff, but also just people's cell phones for their use, and, uh, you know, we could do lots of stuff, but I have to ask people to cough up gas money for me to be here, and the only people who would do that are the people who are backing an activist in particular. If we have, like, there's another occupier, um, who has a gas guzzler as well, and uh, she she does things as well. So I could um, totally, totally, totally <laughs> share that uh, with her so that she could get down more often. Although sometimes she takes the bus, but she's not spending the night. I had some trauma from spending the night. a good exercise in empathy, but it also kind of destroyed me a bit, so I don't need to do anything that causes me to have, like, 
symptoms of trauma. Um, let me see here. I'm reading your text now. I do know we have an Occupy Erie. Although our physical occupation ended quite a long time ago. Tomorrow is the one year anniversary. Oh my gosh! We just had our one year October 6th. Um, yeah, so our our physical occupation had a break about, ooh, let's see. If October 6th was the beginning and it was about 39 days, about. Um, so, yeah, November 12th was the last day of the camp when Homeland Security did a sweep of all those cities, um, ordered the mayors or gave them guidance, whatever they want to call it. Um, but yeah, the national government, police took us down, stopped protests. Go figure. Anyway, um, December 1st was the vigil at City Hall. And we've had another vigil for the same reason. Um, on Black Friday. So it was brewing in the hearts and minds of different people at the same time. And December 1st, when that vigil began, it was almost immediately, concurrently with um, the attempt at reoccupation of Shemansky, our, another park we tried to occupy looking for a place that was cement so that nobody would complain about the grass or, you know, trying to do something. Um, anyway, this, uh, it began as a table. It's kind of similar to what's over there now. There's a little candle and a box around it. But in a way, it's not, not similar at all because it was just a table. It didn't have the little cover, and but it did have the same two signs. Sleep is a human right, and pray to lift the ban. It's a prayer vigil. Colonel Moses, General Andrea, and her mother started it, and it drew people, myself included, um, to sleep out in front of City Hall in a direct protest of exactly what the vigil was for, which is that we have camping laws being used on people who are houseless as if they're recreational campers. And Lisa, we've got some really cool videos about that on um, VigilTV.com where I'm working on uploading to the Highlights channel. Um, Jimmy Rocks the Diorama <laughs> right now is a recommended video but it is only on the archive it's not on the highlights channel unfortunately but you know a person can really get a view because we're talking to people about their experiences and their ideas and you can really find out what's going on and it is criminal to the most exploitative sense. So, we've been sleeping on this sidewalk in order to stand up for the rights of people who have no alternative but to sleep outside and to not allow police to take their blankets and call them a camper and make them freeze, even in the rain they take their blankets. I mean, this is, that's the extreme, right? Um, they're just sending a message that they want them to just go off and die. That's what it comes down to. Um, they put up these notices that say, illegal campground, and clear out a bridge, and fence it off, and give people, you know, almost no warning before they clear out the only dry spot in town, 
which happened to be out of sight. So if anybody complained about the eyesore of seeing people suffering, you know, they don't have to see that, thank God. Well, they clear it out. And what those notices say is, you could go to a shelter, here's a phone number. And those shelters are full every night. So they know darn well that if they have, um, if they had uh, told them to move, that they would be displacing all those people in the shelter. Like, for every person that goes in, another has to come out. So there's 2,500 people left sleeping on our streets in Portland. Now that's messed up to say to go to a shelter. How dare you? There's only, I don't know, there, there's like a thousand beds or some horrible amount, if that, in our whole city. They just cleared out the tent city, all homeless people. Same thing happened here just the other day. So, um, Lisa, this is the kind of thing where if you have an Android phone and a clear hotspot <laughs> or a data plan, you could go over and start talking to people about what happened and get them, you know, those who want to be on camera or, you know, off camera but on recorder of their voice, telling about what happened and what's been happening. I don't know if you're interested in doing that, but it's sure amazing how much knowledge people have. It's pretty heartbreaking, though. Do you guys have um, streamers where you're at? Do you have a big live stream or you stream crew like we do here? Hi viewer. I'm just talking to you guys. Lisa's here telling me about the city of Erie. At the shore of Lake Erie, I am guessing. I think she's confirmed. Anyway, um, that they cleared out a camp, a tent city, by force. Oh, so you don't have any streamers. Well, you know, one of our dreams here at Visual TV is to get other streaming communities going with well this is an issue for me because I believe the civil rights movement is what Occupy is the spark of and that it will be led by the most oppressed and the people who are being denied a right to life merely by their poverty which is our homeless population will be the ones to spearhead that and to get uh, other people involved because that's how it works the most oppressed get people advocating with them and then that that garners the power that goes all the way up until it affects our whole society because I mean our civil rights movement don't just affect the, the people who are the most oppressed they change everything so this whole 99 percent we may be a majority of people but we're a, a minority of power so I could see this as being, you know, a root and definitely a power source. Our folks here who are demonstrating are really good, really knowledgeable, really motivated, obviously. Anyway, that, uh, be so cool to see other folks getting these stories. Um, you know, Occupy Portland has um, had a different relationship with people who were unhoused because the camp was so large. Um, 
michael moore came here and talked to us and he was like you guys have the biggest camp in the usa as far as you know number of tents i think he meant like wall street was a bigger demonstration but our our tents were formidable um we had two city block parks full and it was spilling out to a third which was a federal park the day he got there <laughs> it was a triumphant day it was halloween and we had just chased <laughs> we had just chased homeland security away anyway um well the reason that there were so many tents is because once this happened people came to hold the space not just who originally um like of all the people who are suited to hold a space in an occupation somebody who's barely making their rent uh is probably not the person to go and live somewhere else in a tent so there were a lot of folks who made the base of you know holding that space which became that that platform they uh they were houseless not all of them but a lot of them so we were integrated and because there were meals served and there was things like um, mental health services and naturopath and you know first aid and all sorts of just you know clothing and such people had their basic needs met and so it wasn't really something you would distinguish who is houseless and who isn't it was just everybody's looking like they were camping looking like they were living in tents we're equal and then when the camp was broken up half of us went to go survive totally taken out of the political process totally taken out of their ability to function on this level one minute they're some of them actually did have mental illness aggravated by their condition and not long after the camp was broken up the people i saw you know making proposals in the ga a person reported that this person was now rocking and not registering the sound of people talking to him um so so our relationship with houselessness is not just you know the issue of you know how it relates to, to oppression it's also it's also um, how it relates to us and so right now we've got people sleeping outside on a regular basis rotating or here all the time even in some cases who are housed because we will not be separated again we're together and so this place right here is completely integrated and i know of nothing like it before where we had people who were housed sleeping outside to make a stronger advocate for safety for those who have to be out here So anyway, that, that's kind of how I see the, the occupation. The vigil itself is, is its own beautiful thing that people put their prayers, their thoughts, and attempt to directly transform our situation. It's, it's lovely. I'm reading your text now. I just got it. Let's see. Well, Lisa, I'm going to not read out what you said, but I can see that you cannot be doing that. Um, this sounds like a very difficult life. Um, but I think it's awesome that you're here right now with us. And I, I don't know, are you... Are you pretty big into cyber stuff? Do you do you get on the stream channels of different occupations? I wonder if we could just find a group 
if we could find a group of people out there who were able to do the fundraising that they needed to do to get a hotspot and a phone. You're looking at like 30 bucks for a phone in some cases for an Android if you're lucky and then uh, or a donated one. And then $50 down and $50 a month to keep your internet mobile if the city is large. So a group of people who are being hassled everywhere they go, like the group that was chased out when the tent city is gone, they could do their own journalism. They could interview each other. They could witness what's happening with the police, what the city people are saying. It's a great documentation tool if there's to be a lawsuit. It's a great uh, accountability tool if, if you can film the police. We are lucky here in this city, the Portland Police Bureau has put out a statement that they welcome the transparency of the live stream. I don't think all of them feel that way, but that was their statement. Well, let me ask you this, Lisa. Can we have you pass on a message to Occupy Erie? Love from the Portland, Oregon Vigil. Vigil TV. We're VigilTV.com, by the way. But yeah, it would be really cool to... Uh, I kind of want to send that message if you see somebody out there doing the occupation thing. I'll have to look up Occupy Erie. Okay, so you watch any and all streams that you can. Erie is small, 110,000 people. Police never bothered us. City slash parks officials. City and parks officials were the ones who came after you guys. Did Occupy... Erie has a Facebook page. Oh, oh, city officials, parks officials did. Occupy Erie has a Facebook page right on. I could totally send a message that way. Although, I don't know. Well, if you're on their Facebook at any time, you might beat me to it. It's just solidarity from Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm really, I'm really interested in how the streams connect us and how important it is. And I would, I would love to be part of helping folks get into it more. Now that I'm getting into it more. Um, So, uh, oh. we'll probably have some stuff going on we'll have the morning show. Soon. I just came on to blab. Right on? Okay, now don't hate me for this, but I don't have a way of keeping this chat and writing it down. So I want to tell you, if you go to VigilTV.com, you'll see my email and my Twitter um, that I use for us. 
I don't know if, if you could, but it would be really cool if you could uh, either... I guess I have to follow you back for you to send a note, but you can at sign mention me. Um, but all of that's on visualtv.com, all the contact info. It goes for everybody, man. We really need to be connected. Um, we have a special connection with Las Vegas. I have videos called Las Vegans Invade. <laughs> Because they come up here like exchange students, and we had one of them come down uh, from us. They, she stayed with them. What a great crew. They don't have a physical occupation, but they're still alive and strong and very artistic. And, uh, you know, there's, there's people who have relationships now with folks at OWS and Chicago for NATO and Oakland for their, um, you know, friends of mine have been arrested in these respective cities <laughs> alongside others <laughs> who live there, so <laughs> solidarity and from the jail. <clears throat> nice. Okay, Lucy, we got a plan. I'm gonna... I guess it's no big deal, since you were on the stream, if I say your name out loud. Um... So... I'm, I'm thinking of this. Can I remember this? I don't know. I know you're on the stream with your name, but I probably don't want to say it out loud because we archive to YouTube, whereas this will not archive what I'm looking at. So, just uh, send us a note from VigilTV.com, will you? That'd be so cool. Thank you so much. Dang it. I am going to go take a nap. This is a out by the curb production. This is like a code for we're just hanging. There's there's the demonstration. There's watching over people. There's a lot of reasons to be here. I don't watch real close um, on the ends, you know, where people are. What I do though is when folks walk by. I'm checking out to see, are they with us, are they freaky, <laughs> are they stopping to steal, and, uh, you know, having various people staying awake at different times deters a lot. But as far as the youth stream portion, <laughs> this is the, we're entertaining ourselves, we're talking to a viewer, and there's nothing happening. <laughs> All those clips that I upload, and I'll be uploading more, is not this. <laughs> this is the late night TV. So I'm going to go and... I feel like what I should be doing is doing my video uploading <sighs> and I won't get anything done if I stick around here and not sleep. This uh, moist cold air sucks the water out of me, any cold air get dehydrated. I'm going to drink some water. It's so nice having company talking. Do you, do you, I don't know if you've watched our channel before, but 
99 is hilarious. He's my co-host. We have others. We have three other people. There's Dan, who had experience streaming, and will get on our channel. So he's like one of the crew, and he's one of the people I have listed on the Twitter page at VigilTV.com. So is Josh. Josh was new to streaming, and he and I would amuse ourselves staying up by doing the Josh and Mary show early on and we've done it a few times but the best Josh and Mary show was the Josh and Mary and Dan show with Paul <laughs> where we put together a puzzle for an hour to talk that was really fun <gasps> yay oh I'm so excited Lisa thank you she tweeted me you guys I just made a friend I'm so excited um, anyway, so the Josh and Mary show was, was how we began with the stream. And it's really funny because he's extremely quiet. And I'm, you know, I talk a lot. And I'm struggling to not fill in the silence. And, and those were great fun. I love Josh. I love Dan. So, there's also Hayseed. Hayseed, Joe, had a black and white TV set 30 years ago, 20 years ago, or something. So, we're sending him out streaming, and he's reading the chat. We're trying, you can't quite see it very well, but he's wandering around going, why am I doing this? Well, because he's really good. It's just really funny, though, that somebody who hasn't ever had a CD player, never had a cell phone, never checked an email, is walking around with <laughs> doing the stream, and he's awesome. So, anyway, that's our crew, and we're all on Twitter, except for Hasey, which <laughs> you'll see I <laughs> what I list for his Twitter as a quote. But, um, yeah, so you should friend all of us, on or follow, follow us, and we'll follow you back. That'd be rad. Sometimes I'll see Dan or Josh in the chat room. 99 has never seen himself on here. He has decided not to, I think. Which is good, because he's been doing it for months, and I can't imagine after that. <laughs> after doing it for months, and knowing that everybody's watching you, and this is a regular, then, then if you go back and see yourself talking, and if you don't like it, it's like, it freaked me out. So I'm thinking he never will. Until somebody, like, shows him. <laughs> Never seen our stream. That's awesome. Oh, Lisa, there's um, a link I posted on my Twitter. So now that you're hooked to me, um, it was an interview. It's like 90 minutes long. And so, you know, it's kind of background noise. But I talk about the vigil a lot and what we're fighting about. And it sounds like you know some of this from your area. It may be similar. I draw some connections to Wall Street, a couple things I was telling you. You know, some of the shared experiences. Just from my perspective, I'm only speaking for me, but um, you might find that interesting. I know I love Artister from OPN and Zena and I've I've seen some good work by the other folks Cleary um, so that's the uh, o-p-n dot org other possibilities network Just, um, anyway that was really an honor and I had a good time and we had like 30 some viewers at the time that I was talking and at the end of it, you know, I noticed a couple more people subscribed on the Ustream. Right on. Thank you.
Thank you. That's very, very cool. Yeah, so, um, that's a, I'm, I'm going to go back and read Eerie to Phoenix. That's so far. I'm just thinking about that. That's by the way, this is not I don't know, what do you call it? A panacea, but I think it is. <laughs> I don't eat GMO. And I don't know, you know, how the effect um is for those those things. I've only talked to people who had other things like gluten um, or immunity issues. Uh, you know, uh, my husband has seasonal allergies and they were crippling and then we went on a non-genetically engineered diet and he lost his allergies. And they've since found that and it's just really preliminary evidence, but it makes perfect sense since we know that plant DNA does inject into human DNA that this stuff, which is made to uh, to actually swap DNA into, you know, across species barriers that couldn't possibly occur in nature, that it would be even more tending to get into our DNA. And indeed, it's actually causing misfolding of proteins, which make the body turn against itself, whether it's the gluten or, um, you know, all sorts of immunity problems. Plus it gets into your intestinal flora and puts DNA in there that, that actually produce, uh, insecticide. So all that stuff I've, you know, looked into since I went to school for botany and I'm, I was in there and learning about it and I got pretty horrified. I did research and I, I linked to these papers um, in my website, which is gmofreeportland.com. And I have a Twitter for that. So uh, anyway, I just was I was just thinking of that because uh, it's one of those things. Any any number of things could be happening to us if we're having our DNA messed with and our you know, beneficial flora in our intestines having live organisms that are being messed with. Um, so I don't know, but I have a guide on there that says, you know, GMO proof your home. And it's a local guide, but there's some national brands. And there's definitely a lot of tips and stuff. We use multiple sources. So anyway, if you're interested in a GMO free diet, um, you know, it's, uh, gmofreeportland.com. Wow. Well, so that's why, that's why Phoenix. I was wondering if it was just a specialist that's worth, you know, the drive. Can I? You find a good doctor, and it's, especially if it's something serious, you Definitely, I can understand. You know, something that, uh, I don't know, do you read Bernie Siegel? Bernie Siegel, for that, he was like, um, if a doctor gives you a prognosis of a certain amount of time to live, you need to fire that doctor because this disease is something that is 
uh, worsened and can self-fulfilling prophecy if somebody believes that it's going to get you. Um, you know, so, yeah, the idea that they uh, could actually tell somebody that they're going to die in a certain number of months when just hearing that will seal the deal and not believing that people have had complete remission um, and eradicated the cancer from their bodies it's really amazing you know anyway I, I just I read like peace love and healing I think is what it was called by Bernie Siegel and it was just random that I read it I don't know how how I ended up with it my dad's a doctor I think he might have had it anyway it was fascinating and I saw it in action with uh, my cousin you know I saw somebody you know really do a number so uh, I know that that uh, you know finding a good doctor is a matter of life and death as far as at least their attitude Wow. So you know exactly. Isn't it isn't it amazing how much um, faith plays a role in how well people do? I'm not saying like, oh, it means you didn't pray hard enough or something like that, <laughs> or you didn't have positive enough thoughts, and therefore, but the reverse, you know. Um, that if people become despondent and give up, they're really at so much more risk. And uh, if they have a negative doctor, yeah. I don't know, maybe being an RN helps you, like, have some knowledge into what you're going through. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, Mary. Yeah. Did you perceive the coffee left in here? I mean, I don't care if it's cold. I was just thinking maybe I could heat it up a little bit. Do you think there's like half a cup left? There's nothing in there's there. There's nothing in there. Sorry. Oh, no, that's good. Oh, you have a little girl. Well, have you read Bernie Siegel? Because not only was he talking about positive attitude, he was talking about the feisty personality, like downright sassiness, and it was excellent. He's talking about this. He took it to the extent that if a person wants to have certain music while they're getting surgery, and the doctor says, well, you'll be asleep and I, it'll bother me, like fire that guy or woman because it could very well mean a lot to your body to have that music um, but it means even more that you are in charge um, and that you can basically do a screen of the, the kind of medical people that you have on how much they encourage or discourage your will and if they find you too willful, then they don't know anything about cancer. And the Exceptional Cancer Patients Program, ECAP, was made up of feisty, irreverent,
determined well you're on this channel you're looking at the streams I would say you're probably a free thinker <laughs> probably got a streak of um, being feisty. Nurses are hardcore. They're like uh, librarians. Librarians, you can't mess with librarians about the freedom of the press and, and uh, you say book burning. the Homeland Security was going to use all the library's uh, information um, on people and what they checked out and a bunch of librarians like all across the United States just immediately dumped their database, just trashed it. <laughs> and nurses, like if you get in the way of healing patients, look out. Nurses uh, Association sent uh, Portland people over to the NATO protests where they stood up for health care, Robin Hood tax, um, some other things. But yeah, they just, they just shipped us out, like 50 people, because of nurses. And um, another example, there's a police officer here um, for sexual assault victims she was saying she doesn't want anything to do with the rank and file you know beat cop type thing because you know that they're, they're giving out tickets they're putting people in jail and she's got to keep her door open and warm and receptive to people who need her and so while she is a police officer, she doesn't want anything to come between her and people's uh, comfort in being able to seek her out when they need her. So these are just examples of people who, you know, you better not get in the way of my mission. You know, is is pretty rad. Anyway, I, ha I have much love for nurses. My mom's a nurse. My one of my best friends ever is a, a great nurse. But uh, yeah, I bet you'll enjoy Bernie. That was it was a great book. Peace, love, and healing. It was a great book. It was so inspirational. I mean, I hadn't, like I said, I had no nobody in my life at that moment who had cancer, and uh, I read the book. What happened was, is it was laying on my dad's desk. Somebody gave it to him. He hadn't read it yet. Um, I picked it up, and I was reading just a couple paragraphs, and I could not set it down. That's how you end up reading his book. Could not set it down. What a great man. So we have some, um, there's a couple of resources. Um, we have two on OccupyPortland.org. There's two, what it says, our media, two streamer channels. And um, you can actually see when they're on and like 40 other or 20 other different streamers um, who may or not may not be procasted on those channels um, from Portland so the website is opdxlive.org and I take for granted I don't know, you know Portland International Airport is PDX so we refer to our city as PDX and OPDX is Occupy Portland. OPDXlive.org is one of those streamer channels and they have themselves Occupy P-Town, uh, those two channels, plus all the youth streamers. 
um, that either one of them will pick up sometimes, and uh, including us. And they're highlighted in red when we're on live. So anytime you want to check out Portland, I recommend checking um, opdxlive.org. Um, and then there's this other one. It's uh, Citizen Streams. Are you on that? That's so rad. Doing the very same thing, but all across everywhere. I don't know if it's global. Okay, so so this is who's sending you, and they're advocating for that. That's really good. I'm really glad to hear that. So, yeah, I mean, if you can hack the drive, or the, I'm sorry, I assume flight. Yeah, citizens' streams. Love them. Yeah, so Citizen Streams put us on. I was grateful. That's really cool. Our friend Rise PDX, he was the one who told me about them and OPN. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to have a couple of opportunities. Um, but I'm getting to know them a little bit. Um, they're livestream.com forward slash other possibilities and the, they have a crew and I love what they're doing I was it was really an honor and an opportunity but I made a couple friends as well over there I love the Twitterverse. I love Twitter. Yeah, it was it, somebody. I think it was. Yeah, I was watching an interview with Rise on OPN actually, and he was saying, I don't know if anybody's really noticed, but Twitter is like the only totally unedited, uncensored you know, free speech thing. <laughs> and I never thought about that. You know, I mean, you can have a curse as your Twitter name. Nobody's going to stop you. And uh, you can say your most radical beliefs. I have to think that if somebody were trying to launch a campaign to have somebody assassinated, that they would pull that, you know, a death list or something. But it actually does seem to be totally free speech. And I've been really amazed at the connections and the learning potential there. Twitter is like how an email with a lot of spam works. You just look at it when you want and know that you're missing most of it. And it doesn't matter because you're just going to look when you want. You're not going to read all your tweets. You're not going to read everybody's. But when you're interested, you just get on there and you just see what you see. And you'll follow a link, and you'll learn something, and you come back, and you learn something more. You get, you know, that up, like, fastest information possible. I was waiting for the alfalfa court decision, round one, about genetically modified alfalfa. And uh, I actually got the answer from within the courtroom by somebody who tweeted it before, like a day and a half before it went on their website, which was great. It was actually good news. The media painted it badly, but we had a rockin' victory for Alfalfa for many months, May of last year.
Well, I'm going to really enjoy finding you on Twitter, Lisa. That was really cool. Thanks for the entertainment. 99's up. He's going to stream. I'm going to give him his uh, camera. He'll do coffee. He'll, he'll do all sorts of fun stuff this morning. Um, I'm going to go home, go to sleep, and be ready because it sounds like we're going to have our work cut out for us. It sounds like the city's bringing it, and i got to talk to Colonel because they're doing some crazy BS. So uh, Monday morning will be a really good time to watch come 7 a.m. Somewhere between 7 and 8, we can almost count on it. Hey, I've been having a conversation with Lisa. Lisa. Right on. She's in Erie, like Lake Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh. She's awesome. Is she? Yes, she is. They're 99. What's going on? He will be your host later. Right on. <laughs> hey, it's nice meeting you too. And uh, check out, um, 99's got his Twitter up on VigilTV.com too. So if you see him later today, uh, you'll know who that is. And that's him. <laughs> oh, really? That's what she said? Oh. I don't know who that is. No, she didn't. But hold the camera. I'm going to say oh. hi to her. Okay. Hi, hi, Lisa. She's been seeing pavement. <laughs> oh, right on. Dang, you done had five viewers all night. That's good. Yeah, we just been, I've been blah, 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 but then it got really fun. She says hello. Right on. Thanks for streaming. Um, yeah, no, she's been, we've been talking about some killer stuff. Uh huh. She's a good good chat room participant yeah. I was telling her that every time we go on it, it shows up on OPDX live on lights up you know right. um, if you subscribe to our Ustream channel of course it'll notify you by email every time we go on which is cool but uh, visualtv.com go to that the highlights page because I'm going to rock the uh, uploads <laughs> Uh, you're so fun. Okay, I'm going to sign off, you guys. Um, and uh, you'll see 99 before long, I'm sure, because he likes, he likes the morning out by the curb coffee. <laughs> so we'll have our coffee shop, coffee talk in the, in the morning later. <laughs> right on. Okay, see you guys. Love you. Thanks for joining us.